So in three, two. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, February 12, 2024. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you for inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat fe feature or by verbalizing in the meeting so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Present. Ms. Hen? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank you, Ms. Thank Harvey. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Thank you. Will you now please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Thank you. Mr. Pedro Agosto? Present. Dr. Melissa DiDonato? Present. Dr. Jess Grimm? Present. Mr. Chris Hartlove? Present. Ms. Valerie Holden? Present. Mr. Pete Dixit? Present. Ms. Heather Logeman? Present. Dr. April Lewis? Present. Ms. Megan Shea? Present. Ms. Charlene Domino? Present. Mr. Merrill Plate? Present. Ms. Melanie Webster? Present. If there are other um, additional staff that are participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Thank you, Ms. Fayo. Uh, and thank you everyone for bearing with us as we experienced some technical difficulties. It put us a little bit behind, but we're going to jump right in with our first contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Hartlove. Sure. Uh, the first contract is MWE-803-24 Services to Support Math Tutoring Core Grant. This is a new contract that uh, runs for three years and four months through uh, June 30th, 2027. It's a single source contract. Th this single source contract will provide tutoring in mathematics in secondary schools. Tutors will meet with students three times per week for a period of at least 30 minutes each. And the um, the total of the total contract is $829,304. The vendors are Curriculum Associates, Towson University, and University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, I have one. This is Ms. Hen. Please proceed, Ms. Hen. Thank you, ma'am. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And I understand this um, contract includes services provided using the iReady software, and I believe that's being provided by Curriculum Associates. Is that correct? Correct. iReady. Good afternoon, Ms. Hen. This is um, Megan Shea. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Diana. Did you want to answer? Yep, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Hen. This is Ms. Shea. Um, iReady is providing just the diagnostic assessment as part of the um, contract. So, and can you um, compare that for anyone who might be listening at home versus the iReady program that was implemented some sure. time ago? Yes, the thank you for that opportunity. Yep, sure. Thank you for that opportunity. So, um, the main part of this contract is working with UMBC for their um, tutoring infrastructure. So they have a well-oiled machine. This is part of the Maryland Math Tutoring Grant Funds that we were one of three LEAs to be awarded by the state. 
And so in partnering with um, an Institute for Higher Education as required by the grant, we've partnered with two actually, uh, University of Maryland, Baltimore County and Towson University. Part of our work with the University of Maryland, Baltimore County is that they actually have the tutors that they hire and train. They have a well run um, tutoring program that we are using as our model for the infrastructure. Part of our partnership with them is that they wanted us to use it the way they do it. And what they do is they utilize the iReady assessment only to identify placement for students and sort of a measure of before and that diagnostic to support tutoring. And then again at the end of that tutoring cycle, approximately eight weeks. In the past, when we had purchased iReady, it was for the full curriculum. So it was a much bigger purchase. Students had opportunities to access um, differentiated and adaptable curriculum based on their um, diagnostics as well as um, time spent engaging with different activities. This is not that. This is solely being used for um, that diagnostic assessment at the beginning and end of a tutoring cycle and really was selected by UMBC as part of what they do um, for this grant. The intent of this grant at the state is for Baltimore County Public Schools to have, if you will, seed money to help us develop an infrastructure and learn from those that have um, established tutoring programs, which is where our partnership with UMBC comes in to play. Thank you for that distinction, Ms. Shea. That's very helpful. Um, how I have two follow up questions. Um, my first is this contract is being presented as a contract for services. Does that mean that we are not buying the licensing or purchasing licensing directly for iReady, but rather it's already in use and licensed by our partners? And my second follow up question to that is how are students being identified for this tutoring program? Actually, I have a third, sorry. Um, in the iReady assessment, will students, are those standards for which they're being assessed aligned with our math curriculum currently? These are great questions, um, Ms. Hen. Again, Thank Dr. You. DiDonato, I want to pause if you want to go first or you want me to just jump in. I know we're trying to catch up time. Yep, go ahead and I'll jump in if I need to. Okay, so you are correct. Um, this um, we are engaging. We've identified both, but the service is through UMBC, which has identified the purchase of those um, assessment licenses for the iReady assessment. Um, second, students are identified for this tutoring um, through multiple data points. We are focusing specifically on um, grade eight, math eight, because that is what we wrote into the grant and that is what our system data told us. And so then we work at the school level and we use multiple data points, including um, their students' um, math scores using both MAP and MCAP data points, but then also looking at um, our curriculum based assessments and also attendance because we want to make sure that these are students who would benefit because this is in school day in person tutoring. So of course we know that students are going to have to be present to be a part of that. Um, and so then using both the quantitative data and then some of the qualitative data at the schoolhouse in terms of identifying students um, who would best um, benefit from this type of tutoring. Um, then we invite students um, and then based on students that accept those seats, we continue down that list. Um, and then I think I lost your third question. So I answered the iReady question. I answered um, how the students are identified. Oh, and the alignment. So the um, diagnostic is really just to serve as a pre and post. The actual tutoring sessions themselves will be based specifically on our curriculum. So the tutors will be um, trained in um, accessing that IM curriculum and then they will work with the students specifically on those skills that they're demonstrating they need help with within the IM. The only role that I, um, the iReady assessment plays is just to serve at that bookend sort of content agnostic pre and post assessment um, for students. But the Thank actual you, tutoring Ms. is connected Shea. to the curriculum. Yep. Sorry, Ms. Harvey. Thanks. Are there uh, any other questions? Do board members have any other questions? I had a quick follow up for Ms. Shea in regards to the alignment question, and I appreciate her responses to my my other questions. Um, Ms. Shea, would it then follow that the pre and post assessments using iReady would parallel the curricular assessments that we are using? I would imagine there, there would have to be some type of alignment there as well. If, yes, yeah, so the alignment would be at the standard level. Okay. Yes. 
yeah, so the alignment would be at the standard and in math we use groupings of standards called domains. So that would be the alignment. So we would be looking for transfer of that instruction at the curriculum to make sure that students are making gains at the standard and domain level in the college and career ready standards. That's where that alignment would live. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to contract number two. For that, I'll call on Mr. Hartlow. Sure. JMI-601-14, Identification Card System for Employees, Students, and Associated Services. Uh, this is simply an extension of the contract term by one and a half years, taking us out to uh, June 30th, 2025. There is no increase in cost here. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to contract number three. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed. CWA-111-24, digitization of CAD drawings. This is a five-year uh, new contract for five years. It, ex it, uh, it ends on uh, February 28th, 2029. Uh, this contract will provide digi digitized fo floor plans uh, with uh, secure data for a functional indoor mapping system, and it will help uh, to facilitate emergency responses. Um, the total uh, contract spending authority is $1,725,600, and the vendor is Geoconvergence. Are there any questions? Mr. Harvey, I've got a question. Mr. McMillian, please proceed. It, I just want to see if I'm accurate in, in thinking about this. So if there's a crisis in one of our schools, somebody in central staff that has access to this digi digitized footprint can pull up like a particular school and look at that situation in real time and, and help the uh, emergency authorities figure out where to, exactly where to go and what's going on in that school building. Doc, Dr. Lewis is here and she, uh, I see her pop up and she can answer your question. Yes, good afternoon. And so by sharing these plans with our partners, then when they respond to a building, they will know the location um, where our various safety equipment is and be able to respond much more quickly. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. COH-900-24 Baltimore County Public School Schools Teacher Apprenticeship Program. Uh, this is a Master's of Education in Special Education Secondary. Uh, this is a new uh, cohort contract with Loyola University. It, uh, um, it, it it offers a master's of education with a certi uh, certification in special education. Enrollment is open to 20 BCPS paraeducators seeking a master's of education with certification in special education. Program participants will complete a year long apprenticeship program and the uh, maximum contract spending authority is $240,000. Are there any questions? Ms. Ms. Harvey, I've got one real quick. Oh, sure. Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Ms. Shea or Dr. Dionato, uh, under the contract description, it says the cohort is scheduled again summer 24 and will conclude spring of 25. That, can that be? That is actually a question that I will address. It's Charlene and this is Heather. Um, yes, it is a program that begins this summer and it concludes in the spring of 2025. It's an apprenticeship opportunity. What happens is our current employees of paraeducators, it's placing them in a school in which they will um, be able to take coursework and they will participate in this apprenticeship to be able to um, gain the certification in special education as reference in that um, amount of time. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm amazed. It says the cohort will provide a maximum of 40 credit hours. How and how can you get 40 credit hours and the summer, the fall, and the spring of 25. I mean, that's what amazes me how somebody can do that. 
Yes, it's basically it's an innovative approach um, specific to the needs um, that are referenced in the Maryland blueprint um, in the summer. Basically of the attendees would be um, taking let me look at so very 612 um, 15 credits and then when they're placed in the um, their current employees, but they continue as they are in the schools to earn the credits working alongside the um, representatives from Loyola University. And it is also a partnership with the National Teacher Residency Program. Thank you. And uh, this is Mrs. Harvey in these this. The programs that are sponsoring them are all accredited. Yes. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Sure, we have another cohort, COH-901-24 Open Course Cohort um, AA degrees for BCPS employees. It's a new contract. It runs through um, June 30th, 2029. Um, this is, uh, it's also tied to the blueprint. Uh, the program supports the blueprint for Maryland's future requirement for high quality pre-K paraeducators. Pre-K paraeducators must hold either an associates of arts degree or uh, child development associate credential. This is, this enrollment is open to 20 participants uh, seeking an uh, associates of arts degree and the uh, Contract is with CCBC, Community College of Baltimore County, for $270,000. Are there any questions? I just have a, a quick question. Um, we're funding uh, the education to meet our needs in terms of um, in this particular case, pre-K teachers, and in the previous case, um, special education uh, teachers. Is there a requirement uh, for a term of employment once the participants uh, receive their degree? That is a there, good question. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, that's okay. There is a requirement in terms of the um, Baltimore Teacher Apprenticeship Program that they do commit to staying um, as a, an employee with BCPS. Um, and I can basically all of the cohorts that we have two that are going through this evening that would begin in the summer and we have seven more that will be presented in March and they are all aligned to the needs of BCPS in terms of the priority areas for these are both um, like grow our own and the stipulations for the Maryland blueprint um, and and also alignment with the priority areas of our system the um, special education math ESA literacy um, as well as as upcoming, you'll also find one for national board certification. Great, but is there a time frame for which they're required to commit? Like once they get their degree, are they required to be to maintain their employment for two years, three years? So what I is don't that requirement. Yes, there is a requirement. I don't have the specified the exact number. I don't want to give you false information, whether it's two or three years, but it is something that we can follow up on specific to um, the time allotment. OK, would you uh, please please provide that information uh, via email to the board to the committee members prior to tomorrow's board meeting? Is that possible? Sure, I will definitely reach out to our um, representatives in our Division of Human Resources to be able to find out the specific time frames. Right. I would I would like those time frames for both um, the special education apprenticeship program and uh, the uh, associate degree program. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? If not, we'll move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. GDA 
300-24 network and wireless upgrade. This is a new contract for five years that go, that serves through February 28, 2029. Uh, the contract will provide network and wireless equipment, products for purchase or equipment finance lease include network switches, routers, firewalls, and wireless equipment, including related services used to increase the capacity and capability of the existing network. The maximum contract spending authority is $11 million. And I see Mr. Are there any questions? Oh. Ms. Harvey, I have some. This is Ms. Han. Please proceed, Ms. Han. Thank you. And these are probably from Mr. Augusto if he's um, with us. I am. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, could you speak to the necessity of this upgrade and timing in terms of our overall system plan? Um, and I'm particularly interested, you can guess what I'm about to ask, which is our cloud migration strategy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we've done a, a cost comparison and what what barriers do you see us from moving into the cloud space here? OK, well, this will support it because what we're doing is in, um, <clears throat> for the upcoming year, we're focusing on where we we did the network upgrades for high schools and middle schools. We're continuing on to elementary schools. And what we're doing is we mentioned um, we're removing and replacing switches, core routers. So all of this infrastructure is aging infrastructure at the elementary school level. Um, this will support that because what we're doing is allowing, this is all network uh, outside of the wireless access points, um, which indirectly will allow um, students and staff to get out to the internet onto the on, on any of our cloud services that we have um, software that we have provided. But this does directly impact the ability for students and staff to get out. So this is part of the overall plan for upgrading our infrastructure. Do, do we have a strategy for migrating to infrastructure as a service? And have we talked with our partners in Baltimore County government about any opportunities for efficiencies and cost savings with them by partnering with their um, current either providers or in-house resources? Have, yes, Ms. Han. So we have not. I do have a meeting scheduled with uh, the CIO and his staff over in Baltimore County at uh, the end of this month. So t okay, timing wise, my, my concern is before we um, make such an investment, I realize our exp expenditures are not 11 million. That's just the authority um, to spend that. But before we um, encumber such a significant investment that we talk to our partners to see what savings we could potentially realize that could be redirected to, the, to our schoolhouse. Um, Baltimore County government has generously reached out to us on multiple occasions offering um, access to their team. So I'm glad to hear that you're meeting with their CIO and I know they have a fairly new one. There's been some turnover there. Right. Um, before we enter into any agreements or continue with the next phase with this elementary upgrade, it would be great if we could, you know, if some of those partnerships could be realized. Because I think there is opportunity and they have said there's opportunity for considerable savings. Yes. And, through that and partner. Yes, and that'll be part of the agenda item or one of the agenda items as he and I speak. Uh, but as you mentioned, yes, so this is the spending authority. So we're um, not going to um, engage or, or obligate <clears throat> the system in anything until we uh, make sure that we've looked at all possible options. Are these the same providers that we used for the um, secondary school upgrades? Yeah, this A couple of like. Um, it's it's similar. So this contract um, was let out through a procurement process, the RFP process through um, BCPS. So, um, so as you mentioned, yes, well, rightly so. Um, even though this is a new contract, we do have um, paid for these services uh, in hardware and equipment um, in the past on a previous contract. Okay. Um, I would be interested in receiving a report um, from the superintendent on the results of that that meeting and any um, steps we're taking in that direction to to establish those partnerships as it relates to these upgrades. If that's something you could facilitate for the board, that would be appreciated. Okay, I will do that. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? All right, let's proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Sure, we have another um, IT contract, JBO-707-21 Radio Communications Master Contract 2018. This is an extension and also an increase in the maximum, maximum contract spending authority. Um, the con contract term would uh, be extended by two years, 11 months to take us to January 23rd, 2025. Uh, contract will provide uh, school and ve vehicle radio systems, components, tracking systems, dispatching systems, maintenance accessory, accessories, and associated services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for 11 months. I think I misspoke, 11 months, and increase the contract spending authority by $2,464,930, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $8,268,000. $951 with nine awarded contractors approved which are listed um, in the uh, attachment. Are there questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Uh, Mr. Hartlock. Sure, um, MBU. 501-19 vehicle service and repairs. This is an extension of a contract term um, uh, that would take us through uh, June 30th, uh, 2024. Um, approval is requested to the to extend the contract for uh, through through the end of the fiscal year, and there is no um, fiscal um, additional fiscal. Um, changes here so the amount stays the same are there any questions hearing none we will proceed to the next contract thank you mr hartlow uh, mr dixit will you proceed with the next contract good evening uh, next contract is for cwa-101-21 this is for on-call plumbing services. The request here is to add an amount of $2,800,000 to the contract. The original amount was $5 million, and the new amount is $7,800,000. Uh, the request is for doing extra work that we did not anticipate, and is going to take care of the repair work needed in next 18 months. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. So the next contract is KSH-307-19 for chiller and cooling tower maintenance. Uh, the request is to extend the period for, of this contract for 10 months with four awarded vendors approved by the board on February 5th, 2019. This extension and modification will allow time for a new solicitation. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit. The next contract is JHO-704-24 for lumber and building supplies and related products. This contract will provide lumber, plywood, building supplies for construction and educational programs and facilities repair maintenance to include, uh, but not limited to pouring concrete for sidewalks, curbs, and gutters, building dumpster steps, and barricade sawhorses for traffic control. The amount is $550,000. It's mostly 99% for operating funds and 1% for grants. And the name of vendor is Liberty Lumber and Supply Company, also known as Pikesville Lumber Company. Are there any questions? 
Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit. Next contract is ASI-817-21 for job order contracting for construction and facility maintenance, repair and operation. Uh, the amount is five million dollar and the increase requested is two million five hundred thousand dollars the reason for increase is um, extra amount of work that we have done for grants for aging school program for asset grants and other miscellaneous county funded projects this contract allows us to move fast and be able to meet the grant deadlines Are there any questions? Uh, I have one question, Mr. Dixit. Uh -huh. Is this is this particular um, construction response for emergent unplanned projects, or is it for projects that we've already planned? Uh, it's a good question. So this is another means. Another method of uh, doing construction work. Uh, it is mainly for those projects where there is not enough time to do it. We always try to individually design, uh, bid and build, but there are a lot of times where we have short amount of time. This uh, method of procurement allows us to hire the contract management uh, the the, uh, the, whole, the the design and construction all in one piece to a previously authorized vendor. Uh, this is a Gordian group. It solicits pricing from 10 different fund, uh, 10 different companies that are identified on the board exhibit. And it, the master contract is known as Sourcewell contract. Uh, during uh, the bidding process contractors provide line item costs for equipment and construction activities. Uh, it's a government agency contract bid through the state of Minnesota. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question or not. I'm not quite sure because I'm trying to understand when we deploy this particular construction strategy. You said when we have to get things done quickly. And my question really is, is that because it's an unscheduled or unplanned or emergency project? Or is it because for whatever reasons we are unable to complete a scheduled project or is it all of the above? Well, it's some of the above. So it definitely is emergency is one of them. The other is that sometimes uh, grant funded project have timelines which are tight. And the third option that I could think of when the project has to be done, for example, during summertime, that's the only time that we can do that project. So uh, the short answer is it is not a preferred method, but it is an efficient method and it allows us to do the project uh, quickly on time. And, and we anticipate having to use this non-preferred method um, to the degree that we're adding 2.5 million to the um, contract authority. That's right, because a lot of these, authority. Yeah, that's right, because a lot of these projects are going to be grant funded. Uh, grant have tight timelines. Hey, can I, do you want me to step in a little bit? Sure. OK. Um, Good evening, Ms. Harvey. This is Melanie Webster. Um, the hi. Hi. The projects that um, Pete and his Mr. Dixit and his team are anticipating completing are funded with ESSER funds, and we have a deadline by which those funds need to be expended, which do, those deadlines do not allow for a traditional design bid build methodology. Okay. All right. All thank right, you. Thank that you clarifies for me. For me. Are there any additional questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to our next contract, Mr. Dixit. 
Next contract is CWA-101-24. This is Deer Park Mill Magnet School, boilers and domestic hot water system replacement. Uh, the bid amount is, base bid is 825,000. There were four alternates, add alternates that we accepted and including contingency. The total amount is $1,140,700. This is to remove four existing boilers, replace with five new boilers and replace two domestic hot water heaters at Deer Park Middle School. The vendor is BMC Services LLC of Baltimore. Are there any questions? Uh, hearing none, that concludes our contracts for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Dixit, May and for everyone who provided information uh, regarding our contracts. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 13 be moved to the full board for approval. Ms. Ms. Uh, Harvey, I do, uh, before you vote, I did uh, get a text that there's some, we have some answers to a couple of questions on the uh, the cohorts or about, uh, um, so I don't know if you want to just let them jump in on that sure. real quick. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you. Yes. I appreciate that. Good evening. I'm sorry. Again. Harvey, good evening once again. This is Charlene Domino and Heather Lagerman. We were able to reach out to the representatives in HR specific to the question related to the time frame of commitment. While there have been preliminary discussions regarding a time frame for commitment to our system, the time frame has not been finalized because it requires the um, input and negotiations of our unions. So if the once the contracts are approved, that becomes the work to be able to um, involve them in the meetings to be able to determine the specified time frame of commitment for our employees. So will those time frames be established prior to the the start of the program? We would hope that that would be the case. Um, so that would be a goal that we can articulate. Um, it does involve, as we said, their input and um, their collaboration to determine the commitment that it would be after they finish the program. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, may I have a motion to recommend that items 1 through 13 be moved to the full board for approval? So moved, Young. Is there a second? Yeah, McMillian, I'm my thank you. Second it. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Faya, may I have a roll call vote? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Contracts 1 through 13 will be moved forward to the full board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, March 4th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for your patience and thank you for joining us. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank, thank you. you.